Oh. Are you going to take the presentation? You like to start? Yeah, I'll just start. Yeah. Um, first of all, thanks very much for the invitation. Um, it is a pleasure to come. Uh, I lived in County Leitrim many, many years ago, up in Glenfarn, um, in the 1970s, when I was up in Lahan House, um, on the Leitrim, Cavan, Fermanagh border. And I have a lot of connection with Leitrim, so I understand Leitrim very well. So it's a pleasure to come back tonight and to say, be able to say a few words. Um, I just want to pay tribute. Um, it's very easy for me to come and speak. Um, but I really do want to pay tribute, I think it's to five people who spoke about their personal stories and shared their personal stories. That's tough. It's not easy to do that. That takes great courage to be strong enough to come and to speak publicly about your inner feelings, about trauma, about life experience, about all. That takes real courage. But it's so inspiring because it's your story, but it's also my story. And that's what will inspire people, ordinary people who will be saying, that's my story too. So I just want to say thanks to all of you, all of, I think it's five, all five of you, for being so courageous and so generous in speaking like that. So thanks a million. <clears throat> I just want to um, say just a little plug for Grow. Uh, it was mentioned by Alan Quinlan. They have a, 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 a stall out there. I'm the patron of Grow. Uh, it's a great honor to be the patron of Grow. Uh, I just want to mention it and to say to people, there's four very active branches in the Leitrim area. And I just want to say, and you don't have to be mentally ill or have suffered from a mental illness to connect with Grow. Uh, anyone that feels a bit ostracized, uh, you know, lonely, um, if, if going through a difficult old period, uh, you're going to be welcome uh, to come in and to have a chat. Um, to talk about your own experience, to share it with similar people, but to set yourself little objectives for every week, which is fantastic. Something to aim at. And then the next week you talk about that, about how I got on. So it's, it's inspiring, but it's setting little targets for yourself. And that's fantastic. So I just want to plug that. Um, and if you, you know, again, take that courage, because it takes courage to say to anybody else, I need help. Believe me now, I worked in prison for years and everyone was telling me about, you have a captive audience, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? And I used to all say to him, why don't you shut up? <laughs> Honestly, why don't you shut up? Because you don't know, you don't understand. You cannot understand how difficult it is for people because there is, it's an indication of human vulnerability. I need help. So that takes great, great courage. But it's also the first step in recovery on anything in life. So it's just to be conscious of that. That it takes great courage. And sometimes we have to encourage and keep saying it to people. No, you can do it. I know you can do it. Don't try to take over their lives. Don't try to force them but encourage them. Keep telling them, no, you will do. You'll get there. And eventually they will. Because that's again something that human beings need and great. I'm going to go back to Croke Park now. Charlie said about 1994. 25 years ago, the last time Leitrim hit Croke Park. I have a purpose for saying it. I have a, a very important message in this. I remember 1994, and I lived in Dublin, I still live in Dublin. The reason I remember 1994 was because I discovered more Leitrim people than I ever knew existed. <laughs> Seriously. They came up in Dublin like mushrooms. <laughs> proud to say, proud to wear the Leitrim green, and to say, I'm from Leitrim. And Leitrim is in Croke Park in a week's time or in a fortnight's time. Well, no, 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 I'm talking about 1994. 
No, seriously. Because it was years and years and years before, if they were ever in Croke Park before. And the significance of that is identity. That sense of, who am I? I'm from Leitrim. And honestly, because Leitrim haven't ever really made it very big in football, or in sport generally, people generally never get the opportunity to be able to say, and that's huge. And my little message about Saturday is, if you can go, go. If you can't go, tune in. Because believe you me now, every Leitrim person, first generation and second generation, all around the world, not just in Leitrim, but all around the world, will be tuned in next Saturday. And they'll be telling people, I'm from Leitrim. And by the way, that is a huge thing for human beings. That sense of belonging. That sense of pride. Pride in my place. Proud to say. And I want you to enjoy that. We are a funny old people, you say. Honestly. We are. And we are, we are horrible, actually, sometimes. I can say this with certainty. They'll go up on Saturday. I hope they win. But if they don't, an awful lot of litre of people saying on the way back, I sure knew they were no good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm serious. And if they win, if they win, which would be fantastic, but you'll have the cynics in litre of saying, well, uh, they'll never win in all Ireland, though. <laughs> and what I want to say is, Enjoy the moment. Enjoy that moment. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. Alan Quinlan spoke about it very much, about his thing of winning. The poem, do you remember the poem? He was so right. It doesn't matter about the win. The journey that counts, being there. The enjoyment they'll bring to people. Enjoyment. So, well, that's very important. Enjoy that moment in time and enjoy that thing of being proud because it's, we are devils at knocking ourselves. I want a few other little things because I know it's very late, but I have a few little lists and messages too because I sort of envisage myself tonight now with you in that dressing room next Saturday. <laughs> Seriously. And some of you are never in a dressing room. But I'm going to tell you what goes on. There'll be someone in there putting fire in their bellies. And I want to put fire in your belly now before you go home. <coughs> Honestly. Because I'm going to say something now that's a bit, but it's going to be true. It was a complete waste of time coming here this evening. If you don't leave here and do something, I don't care what that something is, whether it is for yourself or for others, but you must do something that will come back to you saying in a year's time like Angela or Edie or whoever else. It started that night in Carrick and Shannon. That was do something, will you? I don't hear what I'm And I want, to, I want to say this to you because this is important to say this. Because this is going to inspire you. You think of any innovation, any creation, any initiative that was taken at any time throughout the world. <coughs> it all began with one single person saying, I'll give that a go. And I bet, I bet if, if Angelus was talking about this, I bet you she, she met an awful lot of people that knocked her. Well, you know, we asked that. <coughs> you know, that'll never work. Seriously, our negativity. Should we brilliant at it? <coughs> so that's why it's important to leave here tonight and say, I'm going to do something. If you're lonely, for instance, start up something like a book club, for instance. Invite four or five people to the house. Buy the buns. Don't bake them. (laughs) 
I'm telling you. Buy the buns, because if you start baking the buns, the buns will stress you out. <laughs> and by God, what will be around the corner but competition? <laughs> sure, that one can't bake, huh? <laughs> Down in Kilkenny, you could play hurling with them buns. <laughs> Don't bake buns, I'm telling you. Because I, I would de I'm deliberately, God, that's what happens. Jesus Christ. You give the whole week stressed out over hoovering. <laughs> and the furniture. Are you, you'd be better off to be lonely because. <laughs> so we devils are creating difficulties for ourselves. You see? I want another thing I was going to say, but anyway, do something. Honestly, take the initiative. If it's in your own case, look after yourself. And by the people, several people here tonight said how important it is to look after yourself. Edie said it in particular, because she nearly killed herself. You can't afford to kill yourself, because if you do, you'll be no good to nobody. <laughs> Seriously, you'll be no good to yourself, and you'll be no good to anybody else. So it actually isn't selfish at all to mind yourself. Because if you mind yourself, you'll be able to mind others. And that's amazing. So it's not selfish. And it's very important to mind yourself. And then to do something, some little thing. And do simple things, will you? You're not going to change the world. <laughs> it is like if you don't do exercise up to tonight, you're not going to run the marathon in October. <laughs> because what we do is we set ourselves up to fail. I uh, should I knew I'd never do that. Huh? <laughs> you know, some Egypt now, I, and I deliberately say Egypt, because some Egypt somewhere years ago came up with this idea. Self-praise is no praise. Now, what should have been Egypt thought of that? <laughs> but he did worse. He spread it all over the bloody country. <laughs> and we tell little children, self-praise is no praise. And we think we're great. I knocked the head out of that one now. She's, listen to me, I want to tell you tonight, self-praise is hugely important. Honest to God, it's hugely important. And it's, will you stop negative self-talk? Don't allow self We're our, I guarantee you, every single person in here, I bet, you are by far your greatest own critic. There's no way you tolerate anybody else speaking to you like you speak to yourself. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I'm useless. I knew I'd be useless. <laughs> Seriously, we're our own worst enemies. So stop. The next time you get an old negative thought into your mind, just get rid of him. Say, booze off now. <laughs> Do you know, if, you, if you're a good baker and you bake lovely scones, why shouldn't you be saying to the scones, Jesus, I'm brilliant. <laughs> so that's very important. Listen, a few other little things now, little, little very important things. Accept your reality, whatever it is. We give an awful lot of time. Whinging about, I wish, I wish, Jesus, I wish I was taller, I'd be a model. If I had long fingers, I'd be a penist. <laughs> Jesus, would you know? Yeah. Seriously. I have a banger of a car. Well, it's the only one you have. <laughs> Accept your reality, honestly. Whatever it is. And that's your starting point. I have no problem with you have an ambition to move on, but you have to say, this is what I am. So you look at the mirror in the morning and that thing, person that's looking out at you and say, hi. <laughs> that's where you start. So don't ruin today by recalling yesterday's misery. Do you know, I bet you meet people. I say, well, how are you? Well, I'm all right today, but Jesus, I was bad yesterday. <laughs> I 
I don't want to know about yesterday. <laughs> Seriously? So don't ruin today by recalling yesterday's misfortunes. Live it now. Surround yourself with people who make you feel good, will you? Surround yourself with people who make you feel good. And tell them. Tell them. I love going for a walk with you. You are amazing. We never tell them. We never tell our best friends. Jeez, you're brilliant. Tell them. And stay away from Windsor's. <laughs> I'm telling you now. They're out there in their droves. <laughs> yeah. Now avoid them like the plague. Because I'll guarantee you, they'll drag you down. Do you know what is? I, I, I tell you, I meet them regularly. Do you know in the morning you get up feeling great? Jesus, and you get out and you get in the car. And Jesus, you drive into Carrick and Shannon. And you're as happy as Larry. And you park the car down here. And bad luck now. Just after getting out of the car, here he comes. Mr. <laughs> Misery Guts. Huh? His first comment... Jesus, you look tired. <laughs> That's the end of your day. I'm telling you, you're finished. You're straight into the toilet. What? The mirror. Oh, Jesus, look at the lines. You're now convinced you're in bits. By the time you get home, you have cancer. You have cancer. <laughs> I knew I wasn't feeling well for the last month, huh? Where's your man gone? On to his next victim. <laughs> He'll have half of Carrick and Shannon down at the dump spite. <laughs> I know this person. I know this person who was in a very bad car accident a few years ago. Really serious. Wrecked. Gave six months recovery. Eventually she got back home to a little town in Tipperary. And she was delighted with herself, but she was wrecked. So that next day, she says, yes, I go down to town. I haven't been down for six months. And she gets down to town, got delighted with herself. And Jesus Christ, bad luck. Here, coming up against her, was a friend, in inverted commas. A friend. I don't know what she said to her. Oh, Jesus, Anne, you're back. I said, that was a very sharp observation, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know what she said. Well, I know. Jesus, she said, you've lost an awful lot of weight. <laughs> and it doesn't suit you. <laughs> and off she went. Now, imagine, imagine being that. Imagine having that mission in your life. Push off, will you? Mind your own business. So, so that's very important. Accepting your reality. Uh, look, a few other little things. A few other little tiny things now and then I finish. But it's, these are very important little things now. F I think anyway. You don't forget about the little thing with the friends. Talking to people. Chat, social contact. Will you, will you watch that old social media stuff? <laughs> I, I go into schools a bit and you know, because I know what young people are. Not so young people. So I hear them saying it. I have 500 friends online. <laughs> Online, over in China. <laughs> and you have a problem in Carrick and Shannon. What use are your friends in China? What you need are friends here. Or you are that friend. And what is a friend? A friend is a person who will be there through thick and thin. So you need a friend or you be that friend. And the last little thing is going to say, listen. If you do nothing else in life, but if you just listen to other people. <coughs> I attributed this little, this little bit of philosophy to Jean Vanier. Now Jean Vanier is an amazing guy, but we're not going to go into him tonight. <laughs> And he's not from Tipperary. He, he's, he's, from, he's from France. But anyway, 
Well, Jean Vanier is a fantastic character and a wonderful man. But I attributed this saying to him, and then I discovered that I was, I was giving, him, uh, giving him the credit that he didn't deserve at all because he, he never said this. But this is a fantastic little observation, philosophy, and I just want to share it with you. And it says, to listen another human being into a, a condition of disclosure is the greatest service you can bestow on a fellow human being. To listen another person into a condition of disclosure is the greatest service you can bestow on another human being. I just want to tell you that. That means you're there for the long road. You are listening, not interrupting, not giving advice, That's the greatest killer of all, isn't it? <laughs> I know what you need. <laughs> well, do you now? Well, you're a bloody genius because I don't know myself. <laughs> the listener, the person who listens, but, and there's, a little, there's another little sting to the tail, not just listening, but hearing. And there's a big difference. Hearing. The small little child, that little three-year-old, somebody, I bet Angela, I bet you're 90% of it is uh, sitting down and, and tell me, tell me. No interruptions, just every single one of us here, whether we're professional or just ordinary people in doing ordinary things can be fantastic listeners for other people. It's the greatest therapy of all to be heard. And, and you know, get with, a, with a bit of positivity. We mentioned tonight, there's Babs Keating, the famous Tipperary hurler footballer, said, there's six inches between a clap in the back and a kick in the arse. <laughs> and there's six inches between positivity and negativity. And I never met a human being yet, and I'm finishing on this, but I never met a human being yet that loved criticism. Honestly, not one person that ever, I ever meet said, no, belt away, I don't mind, no. <laughs> if we're all honest now, we hate criticism. And don't give me constructive criticism either. Because <laughs> people say that to me, say, oh, what about constructive criticism? I always say to them, keep that for yourself. But what, listen, just to finish off then, but what, what really makes a difference for human beings, every human being? What really do they appreciate? They appreciate a bit of praise. And in Ireland, we are miserable with praise. <laughs> Won't give them any big head. Eh? <laughs> well, there's no danger in Ireland that anyone will ever get a big head. Well, I came across this, and it's my parting little shot. Stare, you know, glance at the problems in your life and stare at all the positives. All of us as human beings, believe me, have far more positives in our lives than negatives. And pass that on to other people. Praise them and encourage them. And that way, you will be making a difference. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Lonergan. Give him a standing ovation.